Marco Rubio now stepping up his hits on Ted Cruz, accusing the Texas senator of misleading campaign tactics. I like Ted, but in this campaign in the last few weeks, he has kind of developed this disturbing pattern of telling things that simply aren't true. Just this week alone, he had an ad pulled off the air because it lied about sanctuary cities and immigration. He has also, by the way, uh, lied about my position on marriage, my position on Planned Parenthood. We all saw what he did to Ben Carson. He keeps acting like it was just a whisper campaign. That was from Sunday. Now today, former Republican presidential candidate, Louisiana Governor Bobby Jindal, has also endorsed Rubio and Senator, well, our governor, rather, welcome back to our program here. I, I want you to... Bill, well, good morning. Thank I, you for I having just, me back. I want you to comment a little bit on the following exchange between Marco Rubio and Ted Cruz on Saturday. Just watch here. Marco went on Univision in Spanish and said he would not rescind President Obama's illegal executive amnesty on his first day in office. First of all, I don't know how he knows what I said on Univision because he doesn't speak Spanish. And second of all, the other point that I would make... Marco, si quieres, díselo ahora. Ahora mismo, díselo ahora. En español, si quieres. Look, this is a disturbing pattern now. Because for a number of weeks now, Ted Cruz has just been telling lies. Governor, what do, what's that all about? Well, a couple of things, Bill. First of all, I don't speak Spanish. I'll, I'll say that up front. So I have no idea what, what Senator Cruz was saying in Spanish. But, but secondly, you know, I came out last week and I did say, I, you know, I criticized Senator Cruz for lying about Senator Rubio's record. And specifically, Senator Cruz talking to some conservatives in South Carolina criticized uh, Senator Rubio's commitment to the pro-life cause, his commitment to defunding Planned Parenthood. Even the National Right to Life group, which is a very respected nonpartisan group, came out, criticized this attack, said it was not true. Senator Rubio is 100% pro-life. That is a personal conviction. I, I think it's wrong to criticize him for that. In the previous debate, you remember, Bill, he, he said that he had a very powerful moment where he said he'd rather, be, he'd rather lose the election than be wrong on this issue, defending himself uh, against folks that said he was too pro-life. The liberals are coming after him for being pro-life. You expect that from Democrats. You don't expect it from another Republican. This election needs to be about the future. Bill, I think the election changed dramatically on Saturday with the death uh, with the death over this weekend of, of Supreme Court Justice Scalia, I think we're now in a very, very new world, a very dangerous world. This is an important election. We have to yeah. elect a conservative. I yeah. think Marco Rubio <laughs> is best positioned to unify our party and win this election. I, you know, I, I don't think Democrats would disagree with that last point there about how the death of Justice Scalia has changed this election. Back to the debate on Saturday night, however. What, what do you think that back and forth did? to the Republican Party. What do you think it did to the GOP brand uh, in 2016? Well, okay. Bill, I, I, don't, I don't mind a hotly contested primary. I know that a lot of uh, Republican elites and D.C. leaders wring their hands. They'd rather this election be done sooner than later. Let the voters decide. I know a lot of things get said in the heat of the moment. I think we'll all come together and support our nominee. I think that nominee is going to be Marco Rubio. And I think our, our voters are going to be very motivated knowing that with a court that used to be split 5-4, now that it's deadlocked 4-4, we need a Republican, a conservative president who will appoint a judge who will actually read the Constitution. You know, look, we've got cases, whether it's abortion, Second Amendment rights, First Amendment religious liberty rights, we have a lot of issues coming before the court. I know there were a lot of South Carolinians that were thinking about voting for Donald Trump as a protest vote. I, I think hopefully this will change some of their minds. I hope they'll realize Donald Trump, first of all, would have a very hard time winning in November. Secondly, I don't think we can be as confident uh, that he would appoint a conservative jurist the way that we know Marco Rubio would appoint somebody just like well, Scalia you know, on who that, will read the Constitution, not make up the laws. Uh, on that point, um, Rubio was stumbling out of New Hampshire, and many accounts feel that he won that debate on Saturday night. Uh, was that a must win for him, do you think, uh, after uh, the previous debate and the finish in New Hampshire in order to get some sort of mojo back quickly? I need a quick answer on that, too, Governor. Look, I think he did very well in the debate, but I don't think there's any one debate that's going to win or lose this election. His campaign's built for the long run. He's a principled conservative. That's why I think he's going to win this nomination and win the election. Well, Governor, thank you for your time. Bobby Jindal there from Baton Rouge today. Thank you, thank sir, you for Bill. coming back today. Thank